Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending September the 12th. First up, this was sent from my friend Chris P., also known as Darth Peachy on YouTube. I had no idea, but YouTube actually has a testing page just like Google has, or I think still um, has, or had, whatever the case may be. But this uh, it's just YouTube.com slash test tube. And right now, uh, what, it, what they're doing is they're just putting kind of things together for you to test and to try. And right now they're testing 4K resolution at 60 frames per second if you want to try that. And you can also try out the redesigned YouTube player. So I guess just as they have new ideas and new products they might want to add to YouTube in the future or just try out and maybe they won't make it, you can go to youtube.com slash test tube and be a tester. I remember I liked to do it for Google. There were some things that Google had in their testing part that I really liked and some they've gotten rid of that I kind of miss. But yeah, if you want to be a new tester and try out some new things, try this out. As usual, all the links to all the articles and everything I'm talking about will be down below in the description box. This next one was from Bob, 1954 Shadow. Coming soon, helmets made of carrots. This is a scientist. They made a material called Curran, C-U-R-R-A-N, after the Gaelic word for carrot and set out to show that it could be used as an alternative to glass or carbon fibers. They say it's nearly twice as strong and slightly lighter than carbon. In 2006, Hepworth and Whale founded Cellucomp, a company to develop Curran and other plant-based materials. Christian Kemp, the CEO, says they started with carrots because they were cheap and easy to get. They would just go out and buy them at their local grocery store, but they soon realized that the carrot bulb actually worked well and they could tap into agricultural waste to source their material. They actually made fishing rods from it, and I guess they sold very well. So this would be kind of cool, too, depending on the kind of binding agent they're using. If they would use a, a biodegradable or a non-toxic binding agent, you could actually make motorcycle safety gear and sports safety gear that's uh, totally biodegradable. Maybe have it so that it's uh, made to last five, six, seven years, and then you can uh, just basically recycle it and grind it up. Most people say you shouldn't really uh, use a helmet anymore after about uh, five or six years anyway, made out of the um, regular materials. But if we can make it out of biodegradable materials, that would be even greater. This next one is New Pluto Images from NASA's New Horizon. It's complicated. This is a really cool article, too. Now, I'm hoping eventually in the future what they do is they get pictures of the moons of Pluto, especially um, Charon and the other smaller moons. But right now, because of the fact that they've got some time as they're traveling to the next object, which is going to take several years, they're going to just start downloading high-resolution images of Pluto and then hopefully go on from there and get us some of the moon photographs. But the resolutions are really fantastic, and I'll tell you what some of the scientists are saying here. This is from NASA.gov, so it's real easy. Just go to NASA.gov and click on New Horizons or click on the link that I'll include. The surface of Pluto is every bit as complex as that of Mars, said Jeff Moore, leader of the New Horizons Geological. Well, this, what he is is the GGI team is what they call it. I'll just make it brief. At NASA's Ames Center in Moffett Field, California, the randomly jumbled mountains might be huge blocks of hard water ice floating within a vast, deeper denser, softer deposit of frozen nitrogen with the region formerly named Sputnik, informally named Sputnik Planum. New images also show the most heavily cratered and thus oldest terrain yet seen by New Horizons on Pluto next to the youngest, most crater-free icy plains. There might even be a field of dark, wind-blown dunes, among other possibilities. Seeing dunes on Pluto, if that is what they are, would be completely wild because Pluto's atmosphere is so thin, said William B. McKinnon, another member of the GGI team from Washington University in St. Louis, either Pluto had a thicker atmosphere in the past or some process we hadn't figured out is at work. It's a head scratcher. <clears throat> so if you get a chance, check <clears throat> excuse me, if you get a chance check out the New Horizons website and also I'll include a link to uh, a good article from Astronomy magazine that talks a little bit about Pluto and the high resolution images. <clears throat> and last up this is from Indiegogo. That's a site kind of like uh, Kickstarter where they ask crowdfunding for ideas that scientists come up with and engineers and stuff like that. This is called the Photokite, <coughs> F-O-T-O-K-I-T-E-5, P-H-I, aerial videos made easy. And the cool thing about it is it's kind of like a four-rotor drone, but it's a tethered drone. 
And to me, that's kind of a cool idea because it can keep the price down cheaper now. They've got only five days left as of today, Sunday. There's five days left, and they're 91% funded. They're asking for 300000 and they're up to 272255 So this is going to be really close. Uh, one thing I think that may hurt it is they're uh, selling these to the donors. So if you if you make a donation and they also raise enough money, both happening, you'd be able to get one of these for around $299 plus shipping, which I think is a fairly reasonable price. Uh, what I'll put is I'll put the uh, video. It's a it's a GIF image, but I'm going to try to convert it and see if I can put the video up, or I'll I'll find some way to put it up as you're as I'm talking about this, and you can see it. It just it fits in a little tiny tube you could carry in a backpack easily, and by having this thing on a tether, you don't have to have all the extra controls and the GPS and stuff like that, and you can take some quick aerial shots from wherever you're at. And according to them, uh, you do have to set the angle that you want the camera to be at as far as up and down, but they say according to uh, what the article says here that using the tether and using wrist motion, you can actually change the direction and get it to turn to get your shots. So if you're just somebody that's uh, wanting a drone copter just to get some quick shots to add the different videos, uh, maybe you're at a wedding or a family picnic or something like that and you just want some quick aerial shots just to add to the interest of the video, this would be more than enough and a lot less chance you're going to lose it, a lot less chance you're going to get in trouble for flying it over somebody's property or something like that or um, almost no chance you're going to lose control of it and it's going to fly away and you're going to lose it. So I'm just hoping that they... Uh, not only get fully funded, but that they keep the price around $299 because they're saying the suggested retail price is around $500. To me, that's not going to quite cut it. If they raise the price up to that, then people are going to say, well, why don't I just you know, pay a couple hundred extra and get a DJI Phantom? So I think uh, this thing succeeding really needs them to keep that price that low. So anyway, thank you for uh, viewing. Thank you for all the contributors that contribute to the show to make it what it is. I really appreciate that, and I will catch you guys next week.